Welcome to the Parental Compass. I'm your host, Bobby Williams. As always, please leave a comment, give us a like on our pages, give us a review, share with a friend, because all of those things are helping us to get the show out there to more people. Today's topic is bullying. In this virtual world that we're all stuck living in right now, it's a bigger topic than ever. Our guest today is a best-selling author who has appeared on little shows like Oprah, now she's talking here with me, Barbara Coloroso. So my only regret with talking with Barbara today is that we only were able to get to like the tip of the iceberg of all the amazing information that she has to share. So I'd encourage you to please check out her book. It's on Amazon. It is called The Bully, The Bullied, and The Not-So-Innocent Bystander. But she was just a total wealth of information. I think there's some great takeaways you can get. Welcome to The Parental Compass. So let's talk a little bit about bullying specifically. What is bullying? Because that seems like such a huge, broad term that covers a lot of ground. So if you were going to just briefly define bullying, how would you define it? Uh, One of the biggest mistakes we as educators, and I'll say as parents, make is we fail to discern the difference Mm -hmm. between normal, natural, and necessary conflict and bullying. Bullying is a conscious, willful, deliberate activity intended to harm, where you often get pleasure from the other person's pain. It's laughing at somebody. It's doing something to somebody. Conflict is uh, with someone. Bullying is at someone. There is always an imbalance of power, whether it's size, number, gender, um, position of uh, status in the community. Uh, It can be any number of those things, but there is always an imbalance of power. There is always an intent to harm. Uh, Not an oops didn't mean it. Um, uh, but an intent to harm, there's always threat of further aggression. And it, if it continues without any intervention, it becomes terror. And terror in itself um, is uh, enough to cause a targeted kid to feel like it's never going to end. Yeah, I think about, you know, when I was in middle school, that seemed like the most brutal time for bullying in my life. You know, I remember just walking down the hallway and this kid would just randomly kind of shoulder check me or kind of like run into the side of my chest, just like, ugh. And I didn't even um, know this kid or have any idea why he was doing it. It's like, what the hell is this kid's problem? What do you think was going on with that kid that motivated him to want to do that in the first place? Because uh, th- there are seven different kinds of bullies and that myth that, well, they must be hurting human beings. They may be damaged human beings, but the high status social bully will do it because he or she knows they can. In fact, they put you as a less than other. You were, were you small? in middle school? It's tall. This kid was small. Oh, okay. Well, he, he didn't have his head on straight then. <laughs> um, they do it. Bullies bully because they can. Uh-huh. They've been taught to do it. It's been a tool. Many targeted and bullied kids um, actually are hurting. Uh, they've been targeted at home uh, or they've been targeted by a, an adult in their life or by other kids and they're striking back and they decide not only just to strike back, but they begin to develop utter contempt for another human being. See, bullying is about contempt for another human being. Yeah. Mark Huber said, I am I and you are thou. I'm unique and you're unique. Mm -hmm. And we have a common humanity. That's the we. Yeah. In bullying, I'm an I, you're an it. And once you become an it to me, once I begin to dehumanize you, I can do anything to you and not feel the normal shame or compassion. Yeah. So I don't look for why is he doing this as much as what can we do to help rewrite his script? 
mm -hmm. so that he finds alternatives. And in my work, I talk about the seven ways to reform a kid who targets other human beings um, versus holding them accountable. Somebody needed to be accountable for this kid body, body checking. Yeah. Uh, you know, he needed to be held accountable for that behavior. Um, and often we, as targeted people, would just shrink up and say, I just want to become invisible so I don't have to deal with that. I'll avoid going down that hallway. And we put the burden basically on the kid who's been targeted. I believe we need to help targeted kids stand up and speak out for themselves and step in. Yeah. But we also, um, conflict, we help kids resolve bullying we must stop as adults. Mm -hmm. we, whether it's sibling bullying, which can be devastating to a young person. If you are targeted at home, you are more lock likely to be more vulnerable at school. Mm -hmm. And we know from the research done by Volpe in England that um, a 20 year study, it's the biggest one ever done, longitudinal study on kids who were targeted by their siblings and found they are most vulnerable to severe depression um, to uh, drug usage, to uh, isolation and, and severe depression, uh, suicide ideation, because it's 24-7. Yeah. We are now seeing very similar kinds of behavior from online targeting. Why? It's 24-7. Again, it's that duration. Mm -hmm. Not knowing when the bullying's gonna hit or it's sort of this lingering fear over your whole life. And you that's the terror. That's the terror. Yes. And I think that's the biggest thing right now, especially in this year of virtual learning, is you're not going to get a lot of in-person opportunities to, you know, bully someone. But cyberbullying, it seems like it can be just as devastating. It so is. It is. And it's often merged. Mm -hmm. It's often merged with online and offline. We used to say the real world and the online world. Yeah. For this generation, the real world is online, offline merged. You have your phone uh, in your hand all day. And yeah, and, and what we are finding now with the COVID-19 and virtual learning is there are some children absolutely relieved to do virtual <laughs> learning. Because, yes, because they have been targeted by others and there's a safety there. Um, but we've also seen when the kid is out of the virtual learning environment and wanting to connect with other kids, playing games and the like online, that the bully can lurk right in there and destroy a game for a kid. There's lots of different ways to use uh, online bullying uh, that we have to be tuned into as parents. You think, well, isn't that good? He's together with six or seven boys or girls, and we have to pay attention to, are they ganging up on somebody now? That brings the point is your child may not be the kid doing the bullying and may not be the one targeted, but is one of those not so innocent bystanders who either is the bully's henchman. There's a bully circle. The henchman is right below the bully. You didn't raise him or her to be a bully, but you raised them to do to please. And so they did to please you. That is the things you want them to do and you think, oh, what a delightful kid. But when they reach the teen years, they do to please their peers, not you. They say, what happened to this kid? Well, they were doing to please you. Now they're doing to please that peer. Praise-dependent, reward-dependent kids make wonderful henchmen for bullies. They're the one that will put that backpack down on the chair so the other girl can't join for lunch. You say, I didn't raise her like that, but you raised her to do to please. Right below the, her, you have the active supporters. Those are the kids who will take a screenshot online or video uh, behavior in at a soccer uh, practice um, of one girl being mean to another girl uh, and the henchman joining in. They video it and post it on Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. And you say, but I didn't bully, but you were part of the problem. If you're not standing up and speaking out, you're part of the problem. The passive supporter, you say, oh, my daughter or son wouldn't do any of that. But they're the ones who look at TikTok or look at Instagram and affirm it and laugh at the pain of the child being tormented. Mm -hmm. In the very bottom of the circle is a deadly lot, which can be you and me as adults. 
uh, but it also can be young people, especially in the middle years, uh, who turn a blind eye, disengaged onlookers. Oh, it's not my problem. He's not my friend. He deserved this. Uh, or turn a blind eye and just keep eating. Yeah. Um, the upswing is the kid you did raise to act with integrity and civility and compassion. They're afraid of the bully. They're afraid if they step in online or offline, they'll be next. They're afraid if they step in, they'll make it worse for the target. Or they're simply afraid because they don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, but the last kid is the one you want him to be. Is that fourth character, the one who will stand up online or offline and take a stand and be a witness. Witnesses, by the way, you can have a five-year-old witness who will run and tell an adult. That's not tattling. That's telling. That's going to get somebody in trouble, but it's going to get somebody out of trouble too. Nobody needs to be targeted. A resistor, that's the kid. You like that kid online and you're kind of stunned that, that he targeted somebody else. And in a private chat, you say to him, hey, back off, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. Or the defender, that's the most difficult role to play. That's the kid who will go online and say to the targeted kid, I'm here with you. That was cruel. Yeah. That was ugly. And we'll say to the, the bully, back off. Or I don't want to be a part of this group and I'm inviting the other kid to not join either. Um, and that's hard to do. I, and at, on the playground, to be willing to do the same thing. Uh, and that's difficult to do. But there's lots of reasons kids... Uh, will assume all those different roles. What you have to do as a parent is be aware of those roles and uh, talk to your children about these are the roles you might find yourself in if you're not bullying somebody, but you're not stopping it. You're part of the problem. And here's how you can stand up. First of all, telling an adult is probably the safest. Standing up to the kid who you thought was your friend, but he might take it out on you next is difficult, but the most difficult is to stand up for the target. I also want to teach young people who are targeted that you can be your own witness. You can be your own defender and you can be your own resistor. So it's, it's not an easy thing uh, to do, but I, I believe we can help rewrite the script for the targeted kid as well. But we have to say to the targeted kid, I hear you. I'm here for you. I believe you. You're not in this alone. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings me to my question of what can you even do? If you see your child is being bullied online, it's harder to go to the school, I'd assume. Um, you know, like what are some just kind of quick and easy, or I mean, maybe it's not easy, but, not what easy. <laughs> but quick parent can yeah, what see your child is being targeted. Cause that seems really difficult. Your child may not even want you to know or get involved in the first place. So what's something practical there? There's several reasons kids don't want you to know, and they won't tell you as a parent. One, they're ashamed. Mm -hmm. uh, bullying strikes at the core of a, a kid's humanity. So they're ashamed and they can't figure out why somebody would do that to them because most targeted kids are caring, sensitive human beings who would never do that to another human being. Yeah. They're afraid of retaliation because they have been threatened. Uh, they don't think uh, anyone can help them because when they reported it before, nothing happens or we dismiss it as flirting or we dismiss it as he was just joking and the like. They don't think anyone will help them because when they reported it to you or to the school, um, they get lousy advice like walk down another hallway, don't play that game online if, if they're targeting you. Mm -hmm. and the like, which puts it all, the onus all on the targeted kid. And uh, they also um, have learned ratting on their peers is not cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and so those are lots of reasons they won't tell you. But there are signs that we can look for. Um, is uh, he sad and sullen? And he hadn't been before. Now, we're going to see some of this with COVID-19 right now because kids aren't able to interact in the same ways. Um, but like I said, there are some who are relieved. Uh, uh, is there a precipitous drop in grades? Uh, not wanting to go to school. And we can watch for that. And even now while our kids are doing virtual learning and a kid is relieved about virtual learning, say, talk to me about what's happened at school before. Mm -hmm. uh, Call me in. 
uh, there must be a reason you enjoy this so much better. Uh, and it's okay to talk to me. It needs to be safe harbor for a child. Um, they're really afraid that you might run into the school and make it worse. But we have an obligation as parents to help our young people through this. Um, and don't rush in and solve it for them. There's some things you don't want to do. Don't minimize, rationalize, or explain it away. All boys will be boys. Girls just want to be me. It's part of growing up. Don't rush in to solve it. They'll quit telling you. Don't tell them um, to ignore or avoid. Oh, that's a common line. But um, uh, there's a, a book out called Don't Think of the Elephant by Lakoff. What did you just think of? An elephant. Sure. So you take, tell a kid to ignore, it eats them up inside. And so you don't, and to avoid, yes, I believe you can avoid some games and the like, but if it means isolating the child totally to avoid it, kids are going to find your kid taking a different route to school. They're going to find him online. And so you don't want to say it's all up to you to avoid the other person. We also um, uh, don't want to tell them to fight back. Now, I know people argue with me on that, but remember, it's not a fight. Mm -hmm. Bullies are cowards. They're not ignorant. They picked on your kid because they knew they could, Yeah, um, which will infuriate you even more. And the last thing uh, you want to do um, is just uh, confront the bully or the bully's parents alone. I want you to remember it tends to run in the family. Yeah. And so you don't want to do it alone. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. The first thing you say, as I said before, is you say, I hear you. I'm here for you. I believe you. You're not in this alone. Bullies try to get everybody to believe it's the target doing the mean stuff or the target who brought it on. He okay. hit me back first kind of thing. Um, they also try to isolate a, a target so they do feel all alone. You have to say, I'm here for you. The next thing you have to say, it's not your fault. What happened to you was not your fault. Now, I work with kids with special needs. And some of them may be weird, dorky, odd, strange, ADHD, Asperger's, missing social cues. Nothing justifies mean nothing. Do we work on those other issues? Yes, but it doesn't justify the mean because nothing does. The next thing we want to say is there are things you can do. And what we want to teach them is to put their self in an assertive posture. We say, oh, look, he's down like this. No wonder kids are picking on him. What we forgot is he didn't look like that when he walked into kindergarten with his little self-assuredness we tend to look at a kid who's been repeatedly targeted and say, well, that's why he was targeted because he's diminished. And so we want to help them stand strong, not tall, because that's a bias again, short, but to stand strong in their physical body. And that's why I like to get kids involved in activities that require that. Then you give them some good lines. Now there's some lousy ones. Well, it takes one to know one, which is aggressive, Aggression only begets more aggression. Passivity, please stop, that hurts. Why would you ever teach a child to do that? That's exactly the response that the bully kid wants. Um, and, but to say, roll your shoulders around and down, stand strong and say, that was mean. Not your mean, but that was mean, or that was racist, that was sexist. I don't need this. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Another thing they can do is self-talk. You can teach them because some kids have trouble getting the words out um, for lots of different reasons, or they're just so stunned by the attack. You're walking down the hallway and somebody jams you hard and you didn't expect it. You hadn't done anything, which is typical. You have not done anything to provoke this uh, and the like. And so what you can teach a child to do is to put their hand up and not say stop. You can never tell a bully what to do, but that is a self-defense posture. That's a human survival tool. Then you turn on your heels, walk away and do self-talk. I'm a decent, caring human being. She's sure getting her needs met in a lousy way. Putting the problem where it belongs on the person doing the targeting. So we need to give them those lines. And lastly, there needs to be somebody they feel safe to tell. And it's not being judgmental. It's not writing it off. It's saying, talk to me about it. Tell me about it. Then, um, and you said, well, it's real hard to report it to the school. Mm -hmm. if, if a classmate of your child is targeting them online or on the cell phone or texting them ugly messages 
or sending pictures around where kids have morphed pictures that are demeaning to that child. I believe it's important to report it to the school. I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk with me this morning. Do you have any parting words or if a parent were to just have a parting takeaway that you'd like to share? Uh, That uh, you and I can be the most instrumental in stopping this. Uh, We are, again, swimming in a culture of me. And we need to rewrite the script for our culture as well. We have to be actively involved individually and collectively in reaffirming the dignity and worth of every human being. I, thou, common humanity. We can never allow another human being to be dehumanized, whether they're a young child, an older person, a person different than us in some way, because we all are. So we are all in this together and we have to make it a better place for our young people. Powerful words. We're going to have to get Barbara back on some future shows because this is just one of many topics that she has done books on and she just has so much knowledge to share. It's incredible. So Barbara, just again, thank you for being so generous with your time and for joining us on the show. All of us were thrilled to have you involved. We're going to be back next week with another episode. As always, please leave a comment. Give us a share, tell a friend, all those good things. We'll see you next week on The Parental Compass. Peace.